What's up, everybody? It's me, Steve Tackett, coming to you from Glendale Community College. And uh, I'm almost out. I'm almost. People are buying today. I'm, I made a few bucks. But uh, I just want to jump on real quick and do a quick video. Uh, a couple things I want to go over. Um, first of all, something crazy just happened. Uh, a gentleman walked up and he goes, do you have a YouTube channel? And I was like, how does he know that? Who told you? No, I'm just kidding. No, really, I got recognized in public. <laughs> so that was the uh, first time, first time for me. So um, I just wanna say, hey, the other thing is uh, thank you. Thank you guys all for uh, tuning in and watching and hitting any comments and likes and, and subscribes for me. I really appreciate it. And um, just last night, we hit a thousand subscribers, which I know that's pretty small still, but that's huge for me. Like, I never thought that I would actually make it to the, the first the first threshold for, for this is, you know, thousand subscribers. And uh, I hit it last night and I'm literally like, I, I didn't know what to say. I'm, my wife and I were just like, just, it, it, it really was unexpected. I never thought this would happen. So thank you guys. Thank all of you. I'm not in the garage this weekend, so I have nothing to really record. But um, yeah, I'll get back at it next week. Um, I'm out here at the swap meet this weekend, so I, I'm not wrenching. But uh, we're gonna get back on those Novas. We're gonna get back on that down and dirty Chevelle here real soon. And uh, hey, again, I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Please hit like, hit subscribe, hit comment, and I'm gonna keep going. And because uh, of you guys, because of you guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good weekend, and uh, see you next week. Well, you didn't think I could leave it at that, did you? I mean, that would have been a really weak video for the week. <laughs> so, yes, I was at the swap meet last weekend. It is now during the week, and I figured I'd come out here. We could talk about what happened at the swap meet. I could give you a little update on some of the projects, show you what I bought at the swap meet. Uh, I didn't get to walk the whole thing like I wanted to because I was busy selling. So, and maybe that's a good thing because I probably would have spent more than I sold. You know, you know how that is. So, let me give you a little update. Let me take it around the garage and show you this disaster of a mess that uh, I really, I, you guys, I, I'm like a really neat person. I like to put everything in its place. And when you have one car that's ripped apart, it's bad. When you have like three or four cars ripped apart, it's chaos. And I am, I'm, I, I'm having like a, panic attack sometimes when I come out here. So uh, let's uh, let's get into it real quick. I wanna show you some stuff and uh, we'll talk about some stuff too. Did you guys follow the down and dirty build at all? Uh, if you did, awesome. If you like 64 Chevelles, go watch the down and dirty videos. You, you'll you like them. Uh, so do you remember when down and dirty had that issue with the power steering box and I got a power steering box out of the shed in the backyard and we just stuck it in and tried it? Well, it leaks. It leaks real bad. <laughs> and I hate leaks. I really hate leaks. So here's down and dirty. It needs a power steering box. It needs exhaust. It needs a front end alignment. I still have not gotten the front wiring harness. Still have not gotten it. I still do not have the brackets for my seats. I can't put the seats in. 
The seats are right here in those two boxes. I don't have brackets, can't put them in. So Down and Dirty has been sitting. So it needs to go to the exhaust shop, needs seats, needs a wiring harness, needs a power steering box. It's uh, it's it's just at a standstill. I got tied up with those other two Novas and helping out Robin, getting her situation all cleaned up and get uh, a lot of the stuff that went to the swap meet came from her garage and shed and stuff. So we sold a bunch of stuff at the swap meet and gave all the money to Robin. So, and by we, I mean Jay, my buddy Jay came and helped me. Big thank you to Jay. It is awesome having friends that help out. Um, I did pick up a few things. Uh, first thing you'll notice is this oil pan. I need, okay, hold on. We've been talking about this for a little while now. We have the 406 that we took apart and found the oil pressure problem. I would like to, I started collecting parts and pieces and stuff. We need to put this engine back together and I would like to put it in maybe the 65 Nova, the sedan. So I needed an oil pan. So Nova, stock Nova oil pan. And this is the kind that I like. I like the ones that flare out. I talked about this in the Nova oil pan video. If you're gonna do a Nova oil pan, the original style Morosos and stuff used to come straight down and they're real deep and they hang down low. This part right here is like really thick and they hang down real low. Well, they work fine and they're, they work. The problem is ground clearance. So for the ground clearance issue problem thing, I like this. I like the ones that flare out and they're shorter. Also, I like, if you saw the video about the oil pressure. I like the aftermarket pickups that bolts on to the, to the pump. See that? So this one's not gonna come loose and fall off and cause oil pressure erratic behavior so that is possibly going to go on that and we'll put a roller cam in it i got two options roller cams and we'll have to change valve springs in our old uh, motown 220s so that's a possible scenario for the 65 sedan now we have this one too though we picked this one up. This is another 400 <laughs> with some aluminum heads. Those are uh, track ones, a decent intake. Uh, I think that's a Holly, what was it? Oh, a strip dominator. Yeah, a Holly strip dominator. Look at this mess. Oh my God, I'm, I'm embarrassed to even show this. Look, I've got like three engines on the dead, on the, on the, you could barely fit one engine up there. I've got three right now. So it is just an absolute disaster. But we got two 400s. We can figure something out. This one could be really nasty. This one could be 12 and a half to one with these Ross Pistons. Check these out. Tell me what you think about this combo. These are a set of Ross Pistons. There's all eight of them are here. Hang on, let me open this. Okay, so this block here came with a set of Ross Pistons with a pretty healthy dome on them. With these track ones, it should make 12 to one, 12 and a half to one. But I'm not sure about valve. We'd have to look at the camshaft and stuff. There could, we have to fly cut these to get the, that, that, I think that's a 208 valve. There could be an interference issue there. I don't know, but that would make a decent combo. I wouldn't even mind fly cutting the pistons a little bit, knock the compression down just a tickle. I don't know. We'll see, but we're, we're possible. We got another 400 situation here. 
Quick compression 400s. I like them. I know some guys are like, no, you can't have that on the street. And 400s are nothing but trouble. But I, I like, I really like 400s with a lot of compression. <laughs> I just do. That's how I like to party. So I don't know, that could be a future combo. Maybe that's the replacement for down and dirty. High compression, 400, track one heads, down and dirty, maybe? Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a possibility. So I also wanna show you something else. This guy, I picked this guy up this weekend and I'm kinda dying to know what it is and what it's got. So, I guess, why don't we just take it apart real quick? I just realized I misspoke earlier. Those pistons are Ross, they're in a Ross box. The pistons, those dome pistons, those are TRW pistons in a Ross box. These are the Ross pistons. <laughs> Someone already hung them on rods. So, but they're really, really, really dished. These are super low compression. So unless you're going boost, I don't want these. So I'm not gonna run these. So I'm gonna put those pistons in that block. So these are Ross, those were TRW. Sorry about that. You gotta make sure and clarify that. Cause I mean, it's crazy, man. I'm telling you, you guys watching at home, they, I mean, they don't miss nothing. Like they will spot it and they will comment on it like you would not believe so i corrected it you don't you, you know you can still comment if you want you know but just i i know trw ross i don't know you, you can you can find something else to fry me on <laughs> so all right let's say you're looking at small block chevys maybe you're at the swap meet maybe you're at I don't know, Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist, I don't know, wherever you're looking at through, okay? And you see something like this. And the ad always says, ran great when we pulled it, and stuff like that, you know. Uh, rebuilt small block 350. Uh, runs great. Pulled when we pulled it, whatever. And how do you know? Well, the answer is you don't. You're gonna to have to trust somebody, but you could do a little detective work if you know what you're looking at, and you can kind of figure out what you're what what you're getting into. So let's let's just dig into this. Now I I picked this up for cheap. I, I rolled the dice because there is literally no information on this engine. I know nothing about it. So, but in that case, I kind of treat it as a core. You know what I mean? I, I The amount of money that I'm willing to spend is like core money because I don't know if it's good or bad. What if it has rod knock? What if it's got no oil pressure? What if it smokes? What if it's got blown head gaskets? We don't know. So ignore the shiny stuff, first step. First step one, ignore the shiny stuff. This chrome does not get you home. I don't care what anyone says. And it really doesn't increase the value. These cheap chrome valve covers, they're not gonna increase the price. If you see this picture, if I take a picture of this, and I post that on Craigslist right now, and I say, great running 350, rebuilt, ran when pulled, you're gonna see this picture and think, oh, maybe the guy spent some money on it because you see the shiny stuff. Ignore it. Always ignore the shiny stuff. So, I believe it's a 350. Now, at first glance, let's say you walk up to this and you just look at what is it? How do you know? It could be a 305. Is it a 307? Is it a 283? What is it? First thing I do, because I am I like 400s, the first thing I do is I always look at the side of the engine. I look at the side. Okay, the first thing I'm looking for 
is does it have three freeze plugs? You notice this one doesn't. It's got one there and one there. On the side of the engine, if it has a third freeze plug, it's a 400. And if it's a 400 and it's standard, call me, because I'll come get it. <laughs> but uh, here, for instance, look at this one. This is a 400 and it's got three freeze plugs, but this one's not drilled. So some 400s will have the boss for a freeze plug, but it's not drilled. Now, most of them are drilled. Here, let me fill this up, hold on. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. This one has a real freeze plug in the middle. These are steel freeze plugs. Who, who buys steel freeze plugs? Never, never do that. It's spend the extra $3. Get brass, okay? These things rust. Anyways, 400, three freeze plugs. This one would have three freeze, three freeze plugs, except this one's not drilled. So anyways, that'll tell you right away if it's a 400. If you, if you come across one that's got three, it's a 400. But over here, we do not. So right off the bat, we know it's a 350 or smaller. So that's one of the first things I look for. Okay, the next thing is, of course they're gonna say, it ran great, oh, it was rebuilt a year ago, I lost the receipts, I don't know. How do you know? Can you tell if this engine has been rebuilt? Well, sometimes there's clues you can look for. If you look at the cylinder heads, usually machine shops like to do this. They'll glue one of these little things on here. And what it does is if the engine overheats, that will fall off. So that's a clue that this engine has been rebuilt. The next clue I looked at and I saw was the pad up front. Now, I'm looking for numbers. Now, you can look at the casting number on the back of the block, and that'll tell you what it is. That's the casting number, and I already looked it up. I know it's a 350. But when I came around here and looked, I can't read the numbers. The numbers are gone, and you can see the machining process. So this block has been decked. This block has been decked. That's why you can't read those numbers anymore. So this engine has been rebuilt and I know from the casting numbers that it is a 350. So we're, we're heading in the right direction. It does look a little strange to me that it looks like fresh orange paint and it looks like the intake manifold doesn't belong. So recently the intake has been off or switched or they're replacing it or they did something because the bolts aren't even tight. None of the bolts are tight. Some of the bolts are missing and it looks like it's not the same paint job. Like that's been, that's painted some other time. This is painted more recent. So that's kind of concerning. That tells me somebody's been in here. Somebody's been in here recently. So I don't know why. Again, we have zero information. So we're just using our, using our noggins to uh, piece this together. What's the story behind this engine? How awesome is Sarah? Look at this thing. She got me a tripod. <laughs> <laughs> Not just any tripod either. This thing is massive. Wow. Thanks, Sarah. Hold on. Let me get you up there. There, look at that. You're way, you're way up there now. Look at that. See, you can see all my angles now. I'm like a supermodel. Not really. Okay, now let's get back to this engine. I want to know what we got in here. I'm thinking, this is this a 350? and it is rebuilt. So what do I got here? And then we need to talk about what we're gonna do with it because uh, there's some situations. 
All right. You can see me and what I'm working on. How about that, huh? All right. I'm gonna start by taking the valve covers and this intake off and we'll see what we got underneath. And uh, I'm sure you've seen that all a million times on a million channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and just boom, 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 the disassembly of this. I just wanna, I'm not showing you how to disassemble an engine here. I'm just showing you what to look for. If you're out there and you're purchasing a, an engine or you're thinking about, you know, should I use this? Is What should I pay for it? So let me just get it apart. We can do an inspection and then we can talk about what to do next. Okay, I didn't get far. You didn't miss anything yet. Um, I let the dogs out because they're crying as usual. I want to come outside. I want to be in the garage. Oh. I know, I know. I didn't even check the oil. I don't see none. Okay. That's good. Now, so the intake manifold was just sitting on here. Like all the bolts were loose. I took all the bolts out and it's it's just sitting on there. So, okay. The carburetor is in a holly. It is a holly, but it's not a good holly. <laughs> it's it's gonna go in the parts bin. Uh, Maybe somebody will want it someday, I don't know. So this will be the first peek inside the engine and we'll see kind of how many miles are on it. We want to see how much sludge buildup is in there or if there's anything damaged. We want, we're, we're just kind of doing a visual inspection. So what's it look like? Let's find out. It looks pretty clean-ish. But it's been sitting a long time, I think. I'll get you in here, hang on. Oh, that thing. What is a ton? Okay, hold on, I'll get you in here. Well, it looks clean, but not clean. Like it's it's been sitting for a while. We got some twigs and birds and berries and whatever else is floating around in here. But yeah. Mm, it's not it's not impressive the other thing is i don't like these heads right away the other thing i like to look at is these heads you can tell they're newer ish heads because i don't even need to run the 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 casting number on the heads i can tell just by looking at the ports these are probably trash smog heads nothing nothing you want just by looking at the ports and looking at the, the shape of the casting. Look at the shape of the casting. You see how it goes in and out, in and out, in and out. Hi, Oliver. Yes, you, you can go in and out too. So you can see how the casting goes like this. The earlier 60s heads and stuff, they're straight. They go straight across. So you see these ports. I know these are gonna be tiny valves probably open chamber 72 76 cc heads low compression smog heads so right away i'm probably thinking the heads are going in the metal recycle bin <laughs> but let me uh let me keep going well okay valve covers are off it looks more of the same honestly i'm thinking it has been rebuilt at some point but it looks kind of sludgy. It's kind of sludgy. So it is a rebuilt motor, but it's probably got some miles on it. And then I think it's been sitting a while. So let's, uh, I'm gonna keep going with it. I'm gonna tear it down. And I wanna see if it's bored. Is it bored 30 over? Is it bored 90 over? I don't know. So I wanna get the pan off and the heads off and then that's probably as far as I'm gonna go with it. And then we're gonna discuss what we're gonna do with the first Nova. Maybe that no post. Or maybe we put that 406 back to you. I don't know. No, I'm thinking out loud right now. Well, that's not what you wanna see. I just wanted to make sure there was no oil in it. So I pulled the plug and it's, it's a, little bit, a little bit of moisture. 
Maybe whoever pulled the intake manifold got some water in it, I hope. I don't know. Anyways, the heads came off. And it's either 60 over or 90 over. <laughs> I hope it's 60. But it's been definitely rebuilt. You can see that it's definitely been decked. Hold on, can you see that? There. The block is freshly decked. Um, there's a little bit of moisture in it. I don't know if it was sitting outside. Maybe that's what. You can't really feel it with your finger, but you can see it. There's no cylinder ledge either. Like the cylinder ledge is pretty, pretty clean. So it was probably a rebuilt engine, but I don't think it has that many miles on it. So I don't know. Let me get the pan off it. We'll look at the bottom half. And then we'll see if this thing will rotate. And then we'll talk about what we're doing. Why am I doing this? I don't know. We'll, oh, by the way. So the heads are like <laughs> very low compression. So you got dished pistons or slightly dished pistons with very open chambered heads. So basically, this engine had very low compression, like very low. I don't know. It is rebuilt, but it was a very cheap rebuilt. Those are cast pistons. And I don't know, hold on, if you can see it or not. Let me get a flashlight. But if you look inside these holes, you can see it's a stock style timing chain <laughs> yeah this is a very 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 cheap rebuild so uh, I don't know I don't know we'll we'll talk about it in a minute let's pull the pan off and see what, what else we got and then we'll talk about it all right well the pans off it's just your regular average two bolt main 350 cast crank nothing special somebody sprung for the one piece oil pan gasket though i'll give them that there's no there was no leaks the engine was dry front to back the oil pan everything was dry the back of the engine so nothing was leaking i'll give them that but look at this it's kind of it's got some moisture in it now i don't know if that's from sitting or if it was maybe when they pulled the intake manifold, they got some water in it and just let it sit. I guess, I hope, I don't know. It's a little bit, it's a little bit milky in here. So that's not good, but I don't, I don't think most of the oil and stuff looks okay. It's just, and it wasn't that much. So I think it was just when they, Whoever pulled the intake manifold, I hope. So, anyway, there you go. We have a decent little 350, I think. But, now what do we do with it? Well, you know the old saying, you get what you pay for. Well, somebody rebuilt this engine, and they bought the cheapest rebuild kit possible, I think. Look at this chain. Look at the cam. Watch the cam. You see that? So now think. If you got that much play in the chain and the camshaft's able to move and the camshaft drives the distributor, then the cam's moving, so is the distributor. Right? So you've got poor mechanical timing and you got poor you know, electrical timing. So this is cheap, cheap junk goes right in the trash. So by now, some of you are probably like, why am I watching a video about the stock, low compression, nobody cares about two bolt main 350 that's probably stuck. <laughs> it might even be stuck. We don't know. We're going to try some of this. 
put this in here. Let's see if it'll rotate by hand. And then, here's what I'm thinking. So, I picked this up from the swap meet. I paid 200 bucks. I paid 200 bucks for it. So, here's why. I thought maybe if it's salvageable, we can fix it up, clean it up. Maybe we can dingle ball hone it. Maybe throw some bearings in it. Maybe some a gasket set. I do have a set of heads. Remember the 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 65 sedan, the little 65 sedan Nova. There's a set of 460 462 fuelies sitting out there on the floorboards of that car. So I wonder if I can hit those, get those rebuilt. Those are 64 cc's. Put those on here. That would get this compression up to about nine to one, nine and a quarter maybe, hopefully. Then maybe put a little hydraulic roller in it and possibly put it in the 63. That, that 327 ran, I don't know if you saw that video, it did run, but it did not run very good and it smoked pretty bad. So as much as I love that little 327 and I, I, I haven't given up on it yet, but that little 327, that thing's probably gonna be a full rebuild. It's gonna need a full rebuild. Now, what do I do? Let's moment of truth. I got my crankshaft rotationary device on the front here. If this thing spins over nice and free, we might be onto something here. So let's let's try it. Oh yeah. Oh, it's easy. It's nothing. It's beautiful, actually. All right. That's actually really smooth. I was a little bit nervous about a couple of these cylinders. Okay, okay. That's not too bad, here. Look at me while I'm talking to you. There, look at this thing is awesome. All right, so here we are. We got this little 350, like I'm saying. Maybe we could dingle ball hone this thing, gaskets and bearings. I got a better set of heads that'll get the compression up to a decent number. Maybe we put a Performer RPM manifold and a little Holly 600 on it. And this thing would be a nice little 350. It would, it's not gonna be fast, but it would be pretty healthy. And maybe we put it in that 63. I know I do like that 327, but that thing's gonna need a full rebuild, I think. Once I pull that engine out, here's what's gonna happen. I pull that engine out, I disassemble it, it's gonna need everything. The block's gonna need to be bored, so it's gonna need pistons. Then you're gonna turn the crank, bore the block, you're gonna have the cylinder heads surfaced and valve jobbed. And knowing me, I don't buy cheap stuff, so I'm gonna buy forged pistons, I'm gonna buy a double roller timing chain set, I'm gonna buy a hydraulic roller cam, I'm gonna, you know, by the time the machine shop bill is done and the parts bill is done, I'm gonna put three grand in that motor. That's, I'm just being real. So I'm wondering if I could throw a set of heads on this, put a cam in it, call it a day. If it runs good enough, not smoking, not leaking, you know what I mean? I'd have a decent replacement. Either it goes in the 63 or maybe it goes in the 65. I kind of, I was kind of thinking about making that 65 kind of snappy and put the 406 in it, but maybe I put this in it. I don't know. So this, this is more streetable, more cruisable, cheaper option, I think, to get one, one of those Novas running with this. So 
That's why I snapped it up. Also, I have a problem and I can't say no. So people are like, Steve, I got a 350. I got, I'll take it. <laughs> My wife will tell you I have a problem. So I don't know. Put a top in on this. Put it back together. Maybe we run it on the test stand first. Make sure it doesn't clang or bang or smoke or anything. And then this is a good viable option. Either one of the Novas or possibly another project. I don't know. I'm getting myself in deep here. I'm looking for C10s. I'm looking for Chevelles. I'm looking for Novas. I have a problem. I have a problem. Okay. Just somebody help me here. Okay. Anyways, I think that's going to do it. Anyways, we had a good trip to the uh, swap meet. We sold some stuff, made some money for Robin, helped her clean out some more of that stuff in the garage. I have a mess, stuff that came back from the swap meet. I gotta clean it up. Um, I'm really happy that this engine, I'm not so happy that it's bored. Actually, we need to find out. Is it 60 over or 90 over? <laughs> we don't know. Let's find out. I totally forgot. Digital set has a no battery. Go figure. So we'll go with old school. All right. So a 350 is a four inch bore. So four inches would be standard. If this is 60 over, it would be 4.060 with a couple of thou for piston to wall clearance. So where are we at? Okay, it's 60. It's 60. Woo. Let me see if I can pull it out of here. It's like 460 right on the dot. Can you see it? So it's 60 over. All right. That's better than 90 over. I, I'm glad that it turns over. I hope those cylinders clean up. They, I think they will. It's just surface. It was just a little bit of surface rust. Most likely when they pulled the intake, water got down the passages, water got in, down into the valley and nobody cleaned it out. So that's what I'm hoping is the case. We might be able to get away with just, just honing it. We might just leave it. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, I do have a set of heads. I've also got a set of 041s. I could use those. I don't know. Well, either way, we're going to get the compression ratio up because those open chambered heads are a boat anchor as far as I'm concerned. So we have to at least get some 64 cc heads on this thing, get the compression ratio up in the nines at least, and put a performer and manifold on it, performer RPM, maybe like a little 270 ish duration hydraulic roller. And it would be a pretty decent little motor. It would get that little Nova moving, I think. So anyways, that's where we're at. That's what we did this week. Swap meet stuff, bought stuff, oil pans and pistons and an extra 400s. And I don't know, like I said, I, I got a problem. I keep, I'm trying to, I'm telling you. But that's where we're at. So I think next week we'll get started on, on one of those Novas. What, what we're gonna do yet, it's kind of up to Sarah, which, you know, you know how that goes. So anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching and I really appreciate the likes and the comments and hit the thumbs, hit the subscribe, hitting, hit something, put push some buttons on there. That would be really helpful. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next week.